Hello. It's the 2nd of July and I'm going to harvest these onions today. I've done videos in the past about the whole process of planting onion sets, harvesting them and how to store them. But these in recent times have been interwoven with an issue I've had with onion white rot. If you look at the notes below you'll see links to the previous videos which talk about the planting and uh, harvesting and storage but also talk about an experiment that I'm currently undertaking to try and deal with onion white rot that I noted on the onions last year. Um, <coughs> in effect I'm doing three or four different things at the same time. The first and perhaps most radical is one that's described in one of the videos where the links are below which was to treat the ground with garlic last year. Why I did that and how I did that is, is, is explained in that video. But as I say there are four things in effect that have been done to try and counter the problem of onion white rot. One of them was the garlic treatment. The second was that um, the black weed suppressant fabric through which the onions are planted was laid down in the summer of last year when the garlic was put on. Uh, so I suppose that could, you could say that might stop infections um, coming in from the top. Uh, onion white rot is a fungal infection which is very difficult or impossible to treat. There are no treatments for it for the, um, the home gardener. Um, the other thing that <coughs> I've done is to, as you'll see from the video about planting, was to plant the onion sets in fresh compost. What I did was core out a little bit of the, the ground and um, backfill that with, I cored it out with a, a bulb planter and uh, backfilled that with fresh compost and planted the sets into that. And um, the other thing I'm doing is to harvest these a little bit early and hopefully if there is any onion white rot it might not have got hold while the plants are, are still relatively uh, vigorous. They could have been left a little while longer. Now I realise that having changed four factors at once doesn't make this much of a scientific experiment because any or some or all or none of those could contribute. Um, to the prob lack of a problem with onion white rot this year, if indeed there is one. I haven't dug the onion onions up yet. Um, but I'm trying to throw everything at it because this isn't a research station. I'm trying to find something that works for me in the garden here. And bearing in mind what happens in a minute when I dig the onions up and have a look at them and you'll be the first to, to, to see the results along with me will dictate a little bit about what I'll do next year. Here are the onions. The leaves are turning a little bit yellow and starting to turn over which is a sign that they're on their way to the time to harvest them. I could leave them a little bit longer but looking at these bulbs they're quite a good size, quite suitable for us to use in cooking and perhaps harvesting them a fraction early may give me a little better chance with the white rot. It's also one other factor I've thrown into the mix of course which means that this is even less of a scientific experiment in terms of ways of reducing the white rot. Okay, well, let's take a look at this one by way of a start. Good set of roots there. Yeah, I think. Right, well, that's a good onion. So, we've not got any trouble with that one. Let's have a go at another couple. Uh, 
quite beautiful so far. So good. Let's uh, get this one out. Right, good. Okay, well, no signs of onion white rot. Another sign of onion white rot when I had the ones before was that roots were ended up all shriveled and stumpy. Well, these are nice, clean roots, so, so far so good. The good news is that most of the bulbs are fine, but the bad news is that I have found a couple like this one with the start of white rot on them. So let's see, the other one right next to it is perfectly okay with nice long roots. It looks like we're going to get quite a good harvest here, but obviously the white rot hasn't been completely eradicated. Well, that's the onions harvested. Behind me I have 70 onions of various sizes, which um, have got good roots on them and no signs of white rot. Here. I have five that do have some signs of white rot. So, what can we conclude from this? Well, not a whole lot in a scientific sense, but in some ways, although it's slightly disappointing that we had a little bit of white rot, it was a little bit, probably slightly less than we had last year. And remember, for the sake of the experiment, I planted the onions in the same bed I had them in last year, which I wouldn't normally do. Obviously you'd normally rotate your crops between different beds to avoid viruses and, 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 and funguses. So the least we can say it's under control from last year. Um, in terms of what to do next year, I've made a list here so I don't forget to mention it, of things that may have contributed to keeping the white rot under control and so there are things I could try again possibly you might like to try. The first one was this garlic powder idea mixed in with the soil which um, you'll see the details of in one of the videos below. 500 grams of garlic powder cost me seven pounds from Amazon. I'll put a link below in case you want to, 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 to see the one I use but you may get it cheaper from your own local health shop. The next thing I did was cover the bed. After I put the garlic powder on, I put weed suppressant fabric over it and it remained over it so nothing could get in from the top until the sets were planted earlier this year and then I planted the sets through holes in the weed suppressant fabric. I mean that's a good thing to do anyway if you use the same weed suppressant fabric year after year because it helps to keep moisture and helps to suppress the weeds. It may have a marginal effect or an effect on the white rot fungus, who knows. Um, I planted the sets in fresh compost. What I did is what I call a pot in the ground. I cored out um, a section of the ground with this bulb planter, backfilled it with fresh compost. So they were growing in fresh virus-free compost from the very beginning. I harvested early. I harvested at the point when there was a good distribution of onions of the sort of size we need for cooking. I didn't want to hang on after that. Um, the other thing which struck me when I looked at these 
is that these are, as I say, the smaller onions. And it's generally true to say that healthy, vigorous plants are better at resisting disease. So I suppose another thing that could be done is look after the plants, make sure they're watered at the right time, make sure they've got the correct nutrients, and um, <coughs> that may help them to resist. It may help the bigger ones here to have, have resisted any trace of fungus that was actually about. And the thing I didn't do last year, which I already said I kept it in the same bed um, for experimental purposes, but next year I'm not going to. Next year I'm going to plant them somewhere else. So what am I going to do next year? Well, I'm going to do all of these. Some may be unnecessary, some may contribute to keeping the white rot fungus under control, but I'm going to use the garlic powder, I'm going to cover the bed, I'm going to plant through weed suppressant fabric, I'm going to use fresh compost, I'm going to harvest early, do my best to keep the plants healthy, and of course I'm going to put them in a different bed this time in the way I normally would. Um, the problem is obviously still with me but it's not a substantial problem I've got as many onions of various sizes as I actually want so it's not a disaster things are sort of under control I hope if you have a similar problem that uh, you can find one of those ways or a different way to manage it if you find other ways of managing this uh, please let me know um, and I hope you've as ever that you found something useful or interesting in this video thank you